There was a lot of brother bonding between Kyle and Ian that we didn't really get right. in the movie. Right. Um, did that? Did you still incorporate some of that into the character development? Or uh, yeah, Boyd and I, uh, as much as we could, um, when he plays guitar, I play guitar, so we mm -hmm. spent time together uh, in that fashion, sort of bonding in that way. Uh, um, but yeah, that was constantly always going on. He, he's such a he's such a fine actor that there was a scene in the infirmary where I mean, after the, he tries to kill Wanda, mm -hmm. um, I mean, he was on my on my cover like he was giving it to me, like he was mad dogging me, like to, like you know, and that's uh, it, that was really great, and I think that really helped us because we did have so little time to sort of build this this thing between us. Shout him out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna go. Okay, so I did this question earlier when. For your dialogue um, for Max, um, learning our accent, mm. you see, work with a coach. Is there any phrase or word that you? There was there was one phrase actually where every time I said it, <laughs> Sasha would, would would burst into that. <laughs> <laughs> oh God! Uh, there are no humans. There are no. There's no medicine out there. You souls have destroyed it all. <laughs> it so, uh, I had to walk around the corner. And she said, We've got to go and get medicine. I'd come in and go, There's no medicine left. You saw it off. And it was like, Gee, that joke. It wasn't good acting, it was a good accident. Is there a word, a favorite word that you've had to learn that's now stuck in your head in the American accent? Fierce. 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 Oh, awesome. I love that one for you. Yeah, this is all on video. This is not coffee. He hasn't slept since last night. Oh my god. Jake, was it um, difficult trying to have chemistry with two different actresses playing the same part? Well, not not entirely because I only saw Wanda. Um, I tried to in the moments where like she had to kind of have an aside with Melanie. Uh, this is an actor. I tried to occupy myself organically, so I wouldn't sit there and go, "Oh, what the fuck are you doing?" <laughs> 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 um, so that was kind of my trick for myself, you know, like, to kind of find things to do uh, because I because I didn't know obviously didn't know Melanie. Apparently, didn't know Melanie so it was easy for me to only have that one thing. Search that on the part. <laughs> Was there any advice Stephanie gave you to help your character development? I went up to Stephanie uh, pretty much day one and said, because, because, because let's all be honest, we all know that the, the internet fan cast of our clients. So there was a bit of pressure, and there was a bit of pressure for actually working on it. So I went up to Stephanie and said, I'm not getting Jared Bright, there's anything that you can tell me about doing anything wrong. And she said, no, you were cast for a reason, you were both cast for a reason, we trust your instincts, we trust your interpretation. Now, day one, you just go away. Yeah, I mean, the same thing for me. I mean, she was on set, but she, you kind of have to go search her out, and even when you do, she's kind of just like, talk to Andrew. Because <laughs> you know, she, really, she really trusts people with her work, and you know? I think that was because they were, she was able to be a part of the hiring of all of those parts. And so, I mean, what can she do? She hired the people she wanted, which doesn't have to um, so for each of you, what was uh, your favorite scene to film? I'm getting quite redundant with it, but <laughs> it's the, for me, it's uh, the, well, I guess there's two. The quick one was when we were on the rocks with binoculars, looking at the Seekers, because... We just go to the kid. First day, the first time I went to my career, really felt like a kid again. But uh, for me, it also was the, the date scene between Ian and Wanda outside. Because it was the last day of filming, it was a, it was a really nice scene to do with her. Uh, the sun was setting. <laughs> He's a big soft deer. <laughs> the, the sun was setting, everyone was hugging and crying. I'm very much like Ian, very sensitive. Oh my God. Love it. Uh, <laughs> giving. Uh, it, was, it was probably the best way uh, you could have ended the entire movie out of this situation. My, my focus is, by contrast, um, it's slightly weird, I guess, but. It's when Melanie uh, Wanderer comes back to the cave and, and I hit her. No, no <laughs> The reason for this is Jared gets about rap, but I think the reason Jared is in the movie is, uh, is because he exists in really terrible, terrible circumstances. I think to lose the girl in but then to have her come back occupied for all intents and purposes, as far as we know at that point, dead and gone. But having a daily reminder of that is, is terrible, and learning how to um, adjust to that. 
and I, you know, usually we know the emotional trajectory that a scene is going to take, and in that scene, I had no idea, I was really nervous about that, I didn't know if I wanted to be in a movie. But having all the actors there, all the pressure on, um, I found a huge amount of emotions came really quickly uh, in that moment. You know, anger, pity, love, hate, all really sort of instantaneous and, and mixed up, so it was kind of a microcosmic example of Jared's struggle. This is all one big excuse to hit a girl. Don't put that on. <laughs> <laughs> I was feeling all these emotions. Oh, I'm so a boy. I was feeling fierce. <laughs> <I'm just a laughs> <ball. laughs> so, would you react to Wanda the way Ian and Jeff reacted, or if you were in or would you react the way that Maggie and Jerry reacted? See, I, I tease him, but I will give him this. I don't think any one of us would act differently if this was a true story and we were invaded and we were living in a cave and this was brought in, uh, the love of your life was brought in and then they were I mean, hijacked. We, we, had two, we had two weeks of rehearsal to kind of get on the same page. And even though the souls are well intentioned and they're trying to steer our world down the right path, they have done one thing, which is commit global genocide, as far as we're concerned. So we do have a chip. Until we learn better. So, what's the version of butterflies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. It was. It was. It was. It was, it was, it was it. Who was it? Sasha <laughs> Bosch. Okay, they're unpredictable. They have an unpredictable flight path, <laughs> and they and they stick on you. <laughs> they land and they stick. on you. And I don't know, I like them at a distance. They're charming at a distance. But folks, don't get it's it twisted. Like you don't know all the fans are going to show up with butterflies. They've already been doing it. I'm <laughs> sure this guy. I have people throwing bugs on them. That's scary. So personally, who do you prefer, Wanda or Melanie? <laughs> See, I think we're so invested in it. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, talking about the family. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we talked with Sersha about the kissing. Was it awkward for you guys to like just swap the girl out, <laughs> especially in the one scene where Jake gets to kiss her first and then you get to kiss her At next? At least I got to kiss her first. <laughs> <laughs> was it filmed that way? Did you kiss her first and then filmed that the use of the word swap. It's... It, it makes for a dull story, the fact that we, we all got on so well. Um, by that by that scene, I think we had each kissed her on our own so many times. At that point, it's just like, all right, come here. Hey. Your turn. <laughs> 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 she was so sick. Was not <laughs> again. Not again. Um, I imagine. Well, thankfully, yeah. we were friends. So, yeah. uh, and there was no awkwardness. Uh, there was no jokes or laughter. So it was fun. We asked her what to ask you. And she asked us to say, why are you such a lady kisser? <laughs> 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 I'd be surprised, like, that was what you said. <laughs> no, really funny. Have the best kisser ask him why he's the worst, you know? <laughs> Jake, uh, Jake, you uh, play both now a good and a bad character in which you prefer. Oh, uh, uh, it's, it's a lot more relaxing to not be in the background fighting people and just kind of choking her, you know? <laughs> uh, I, I had a conversation with a, a really a great actor, uh, Kevin Kevin Durant, the basketball player, is that the actor? I can't remember. <laughs> what? Not the one on this question. I'm going though. We did a movie called Iron Number Four together, and he plays a lot of bad guys. And I talked to him about this, and was like, I have got to play. I got to save a kitten from a tree at some point. Otherwise, it's going to be the end for me. And he goes, he goes, I'll tell you what, pretty soon they're going to start playing bad guys. And it's going to be fun at first, but then you're going to hate it, and you're going to want to play an asshole again. <laughs> um, and there is something to that, because right after that, I got to go back and play Luke and Percy Jackson. And, uh, and so that, you know, I had a nice balance last year. Yeah. That was good. It was fun. It's, but it's nice to change it up. It really is. You know. So you don't prefer what one or the other? You just like the I like the variety. variety. There you go. <laughs> Spicy. <laughs> oh god, that was hard. Let's <laughs> get on with the time. <laughs> <laughs> you have the new Percy Jackson movie coming up too later this year. Yes. Can you talk about that a little bit? Uh, very little, yes. Uh, it comes out this year. 
obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, no, it's great. It's in 3D now, and uh, it was supposed to compete with uh, this movie, actually. Uh, but they decided to do 3D, so they push it to August, and uh, it actually looks really good, which I was not surprised about, but I'm also kind of surprised about it. It's already shot, right? <laughs> sure. uh, now you've done several book to screen adaptations. Do you read the books before you film? This was the first book I read before the film. Uh, usually uh, I let the script be the Bible, this kind of thing. But I knew that there was so much depth in this book that I wasn't going to get in the script necessarily because it does have to be boiled down. Even though Andrew Newman did a fantastic job without compromising the character, uh, I decided to, as an experiment to go and try it. I was glad, I was really glad I did because I, I knew. It was great being able to look at a scene that only half a page and find it in the book, maybe four or five pages, mm -hmm. any description. And you can take it if you want it, if it helps. Especially because it's such an ensemble. And in the book, you get to really uh, experience your relationship with each person and then bring all of that to these very limited amount of scenes you have and make them just as powerful. Max, did you read the book prior to? Into the as well, or? Yeah, I got halfway through the book before the audition because I didn't know it's about the size of the Bible. Mm -hmm. I got halfway through, but then uh, after the first audition, I finished it. So, what, um, what made you decide to audition for this film? What was it about you know, the character that you auditioned for that really spoke to you and that you could identify with? I think with? we can both be honest and say that Twilight wasn't, we weren't the target demographic, except. Like the rest of the world, we felt we knew a bit about Twilight. Um, so when we saw Stephanie Griffin, we were nervous as to what this film would be, whether they would formulate and try to reproduce the success again. Um, but we read it and realized that there was so much more to it. I think that means some passion. I think Stephanie Mayhead has matured uh, as, as, a, as a writer, right. changed direction as a writer. There's so many dimensions, so many themes, so many ideas which have been communicated to them. Um, I think we were intrigued. And then to hear that Andrew Nicholson had such a problem for and producers to look at their back and come up. It's a good team. I initially so went for Jared. What's that? I initially auditioned for Jared. Because I wanted to shoot the guys and drive the cars. <laughs> and Andrew called me and said, But you know this interspecies thing is really interesting. <laughs> Were you surprised at the magnitude and intensity of the Stephanie Meyer fan base? And are you guys prepared for the superstardom that it may surely bring <laughs> to you with this? Are you prepared for that? <laughs> I haven't really thought about it, to be honest. As far as like the sort of like the face time we get with fans. I feel really lucky to have been a part of a series called Supernatural, which is sort of mm -hmm. this like, it's not unlike the Twilight Folly. They're those boys, like, they're theirs and they're passionate about it. And, and, and I, I see why. When I watched the show for the first time before I went to film it, I was like, this show's fucking awesome. Why have I not been watching it? Um, and going in as a third brother was was pretty controversial. Mm -hmm. And uh, and to have experienced that has been like really nice with this stuff just because there is a bit of pressure. You do want to bring something to it. You want to. You want to please the fans because you're the reason we're all here. Honestly, without you guys, we don't get to make a movie. We don't get to, you know, have all this fun. Um, so it's a relief when they come out and they're like, "You did a good job. You didn't screw it up completely." It's like, all right. <laughs> <laughs> so you've seen these fans line up, camp out, and on tour. Um, what's something you would camp out for? What are you obsessed with? I hate waiting. <laughs> I got there's just so much kinetic energy in me, and I'm like, I'm like a dog, and if I don't have a purpose, I start to get fidgety. Um, it's very weird, I know. I don't know. This is this is a stellar one for me. Uh, uh, like you know, especially in like Los Angeles, I see people like queue up outside of the clubs, and I'm like, unless there's some reason I can walk right in, I can't do it. Do you have Madame Two Souls here? Yeah, yeah. 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 Doors open at 6 a.m. and there's a queue of hundreds of people. Have you seen the Max videos? No. It's creepy. <laughs> it's just there's a creepy crossover. <laughs> <laughs> Careful, they might make one of you. Yeah. I, I'm, I have the last say. If that ever happens, I don't think it will, but if it ever does, I'll be 
was I get lost. I don't know. Taylor and Robert. Do they have that one? Yeah. yeah. Just tie it off your shoe. I told them. <laughs> <laughs> you can lift it up. <laughs> <laughs> It's disturbing how much you know. I get a daily Bieber update. So, would you wait in line for Bieber? No. I just have a sort of micro fascination by the phenomenon that is Justin Bieber. What's the daily fact today? What is he doing today? What's he done today? Actually, I didn't get up early enough because I drank He's posted three selfies on his Instagram. Shut the selfies. No, <laughs> just just in his face. He dyes hair a little one. That's interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, no new information today. Where, if if I mean she is right, right in the sequel, where do you want? Or would you like your characters to go? Have you thought about the journey that they might take? I don't know. There's a scene which was cut, uh, which was when Wonder and me are. Uh, Jeb gets in the way, and I hit him with the rifle, and he got knocked down, and stood up and left. I'd be interested to see if Jared and Melanie you now that you know, uh, stay within the confines of the cave and come to Jim's and try to survive that as well. I'd like to know, just stay in the cave and make babies. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> 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 it's even Wanda making babies. <laughs> 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 we could build a bit of guitar. Bit of guitar. Yeah. 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 yeah, we had we actually had a, a bit of a score uh, written that was going to play in the movie. But apparently, it's a big part of the, the, the second album score. Yeah, well, the, guitar the guitar's in there. It's a bit of a foreshadow. Yeah. It's a beautiful piece. I don't know if the guy who did the score the film it was gorgeous. Uh, so. For both, of you, sorry, for both of you, were you given anything from the set or from any of I took a book from Ian's room. Um, I'm a huge Roger Kipling fan. My tattoo is uh, if it's was one of his poems. Oh my God. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, can we see it? I have no idea. My dad's handwriting. It's just really small. Um, I saw uh, that the other guy was dead. <laughs> It's a really great poem, and so there was, you know, <laughs> uh, Ian had a bunch of books in his room, he had this really great uh, um, sort of shelf that was stocked with them, and I found a, the Jungle Book was in there, and it was this really old copy that was falling apart, it had a belt as a, like, bookmark, it's like old leather belt, and uh, so I started reading it in between scenes, and then I just put it in my bag and left. <laughs> How about you, Max? Nothing. Nothing? Contacts? It didn't happen. We all had these little, uh, when you sit on those chairs, you know, movie chairs, you know, the thing in back. The backer. I took the back. <laughs> Your mom gets those things. My mom gets my favorite movie. Really? Oh. How, was, um, how was your um, interaction with Chandler? Like, can you kind of take him under your wing a bit on set? He is a really cool kid. Um, yeah, he's a lot of fun, especially in the scenes with Sturge. We had a lot of fun. Yeah, he's great. He's, he is genuinely great. So going back to the to you guys being cast, um, Jake, you talked about how you originally went out for Jared and then Andrew asked you to uh, read for Ian, but what was your process with that, Max? I went out for Ian as well, mm -hmm. um, but I saw him love Jared from, from uh, day one. Um, and I actually, actually said, which I was really worried about doing because I thought I'm not going to burn bridges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Jake, I was going to ask you, when you, obviously when you're working with Melanie and like the Wanda deal and then at the end Emily Browning comes in, was that weird to kind of switch and have it be like the same character but a different actress? Uh, yeah, the thing about Emily was she really, uh, really surprised me. Uh, she came in like two days before, sat her down, had her watch dailies, and I was blown away 
by how she picked up Cersei's mannerisms as Wanda, and it was really kind of seamless, and I, I, didn't, I didn't know what to expect. I thought, I was like, I yeah. love all this stuff with Cersei, how could this new actress possibly bring it in? And she did, she brought it in and delivered it, and felt, I mean, it was really unique to experience that, to feel like it was the same person in a new body. Um, and I thought, I don't know, that it went well. Yeah, because like watching it, you could really tell that you guys still had like that, like yeah, chemistry yeah, was, was still know, there. Things like, oh, you still do that with your hair, but it was more than that. Like, that was sort of for the audience that needs to be told, like, look, it's her. <laughs> you know, like you really watch, like her mannerisms are like everything Cersei did in the, in the whole entirety of the film. So yeah, she made my job really. Yeah. Easy. The women in this film made our job <laughs> so incredibly easy. Yeah.